Hey guys, it's Kim Face here, and welcome back to episode 1 of my Dortmund career mode. Now, in today's episode, we're obviously going to kicking things off, hopefully getting in some new signings, and really trying to make this FIFA 17 career mode really good, and trying to win, obviously, the Bundesliga and all that sort of thing this season. So, before we get into things, we'll obviously go ahead and select the avatar. Now, the one I've been going with is this guy here, so I think we'll just continue to go with him. That's the same one that I've got on my West Ham career mode. So, we'll select him, we'll go shirt and tie as well, and I'll fill in the rest of the details. So we are going to play on world class, we'll go 5 minutes, we'll go sterling, I know some people would rather maybe in euros or something like that, but just to keep it simple for myself, we are going to go with sterling, we'll download the latest squads and we will have the European competition in the first season, so I'll reseed it, we are obviously in the Champions League, we've got CSKA, uh, Sporting and Ajax to deal with in our group, that's not too bad, but before we get into things and before we get onto like the menus and the emails and that sort of thing, if we could go ahead and hit 50 likes on the first episode, that would be really appreciated. Also, if you haven't already and you're new to the channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. I would really appreciate it. We're trying to hit 5,000 subs as soon as possible, ideally, and I would really appreciate that. Um, in the last couple of videos, I've kind of been asking um, what sort of players you want me to sign on this Dortmund career mode. I've got loads of suggestions that you guys have left. You can continue to leave them as well, because obviously we won't get through the transfer window in this episode. We'll try and do as many transfers as possible, but I don't want to do loads and loads of transfers so it's a completely different team because obviously Dortmund have got a very good side already so I don't think we need to make loads of additions just some here and there where maybe they've lost players over the summer like Hummels and Mkhitaryan who they've both lost so we are going to make some decent signings hopefully and uh, I'm just going to wait and see now what our objectives are going to be for this season and uh, basically how much money we've got to spend I think it's around 42 million to be honest so that's not too bad um, and we'll wait and see who we sign We've also got to deal with the pre-season side of things. Now, what I'm going to do here is basically select them what I think we're most likely to win. All of them, to be honest, are pretty difficult. But Real Madrid and Man United in that one. I've also got Barca. Um, in fact, that might actually be the easiest one, to be honest, out of, the, out of the ones that we've got, even though it's got Barcelona in there. We will go ahead with that. It is for the most money. I think it was there as well, around 10 million, maybe just a little bit more. Let's take a look at the objectives and the board expectations that they're going to give me for this season. So we'll start with youth development, and basically they want me to grow one youth academy player by at least 10 overalls, and uh, play them in five matches, either as part of the starting 11 or coming on as, as a sub. That has to be completed this season, so it's a short-term target. Another target that they have sent me is sign at least three players younger than 20 years old with potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in the same position. So, that will be an interesting one for us, but we've got to sign three players younger than 20 years old. Now, I don't really think I had too many plans to do that, so we might have to now have a look at some players that are younger than 20. Uh, brand exposure gained £102 million worth of earnings from shirt sales within one season. Um, so that's going to be quite a tough one. Again, we might have to sign quite a big name in order to do that. A long-term one, though, is earn $144.5 million through media earnings and competition prize money, basically, that is, within three seasons. So that's a long-term one, hopefully one that we do complete if we get through three seasons of this. That depends on your guys' support for the series, obviously, as usual. Uh, financial objective is within two seasons, increase the club worth by 15%. So I think we should really be able to do that quite comfortably. And the short term, they want me to reach the quarterfinal um, of the German Cup, I believe that is, and the Bundesliga, they want me to win it this season. Okay, that's that's going to be a tough one. We get to Bayern Munich, obviously uh, some other teams as well, Wolfsburg being another continental success. They expect me to reach, this, reach the semi-final of the Champions Cup. Another tough objective. So this is really going to be a difficult season for us. We're going to have to sign some decent players uh, and obviously try and add to the team that we've currently got. We've already got quite a good side, but I think we obviously need to add players here and there, and uh, I'm sure we will manage to do that. £42 million to spend and a decent wage budget as well. Okay, so I'm going to start things off by transfer listing some players and obviously listing some players for loan as well. So we're going to start off by listing this right mid here. Uh, it doesn't really look good enough for his age. And we've got Park Joe Ho, I think, as I pronounce his name. We're going to try and sell him. Too many left backs, really. Uh, Weidenfeller, another keeper as well that we're going to try and get rid of, uh, is Bombman. Now we're going to get rid of both of those to kind of make way for a better fresh new keeper to get into our starting 11. Hopefully that's okay. I know Van Fella is uh, quite well known at the, at the club, but uh, it kind of really has to make way uh, for another keeper. We've got Berkey still at the club, but I think he might be a backup keeper for us. Uh, I'm not really too sure yet exactly what I'm going to do with the goalkeeper situation, so let me know in the comments what you think about that, 
and I'll read and reply as usual. Um, but yeah, we're basically going to start off by signing a new keeper and I think a new centre back as well. But I didn't really realise that we've actually got quite good squad depth to be honest through most of the team anyway. So there won't be loads of signings necessary. Uh, obviously Andre Shirley here, I'm really looking forward to using him in some capacity. Might well be as a striker um, off the bench or something like that. Uh, but yeah, we've got loads of different players to look at. We'll start off by looking at goalkeeper, I think, and then we'll move on to centre-backs afterwards. Okay, the first goalkeeper I'm going to look at is Timo Horn. I think that's pronounced right. Let me know in the comments below if it's pronounced wrongly. Uh, he's valued at 20 million, though. So he's quite an expensive keeper. It's going to be tough to get him on our budget. We don't have loads and loads of money to spend. Uh, but obviously, we do have players available to trade if we need to. Um, but I'm not convinced, really, that 20 million is going to be a viable option for us. But I think we'll go with Weidenfeller as part of that deal. And maybe stick in, I don't know, 15 million as well. It's a bit of a stretch, obviously. I don't think they'll agree to it. But we'll see what they say to the initial offer and whether they are interested in Vine Fella or not. We'll also put in a bid for Leno as well, but I've got a feeling it's going to be even more than that. Yeah, uh, 36 million. Um, we'll leave him for now, I think. Another player we'll take a look at is Nicholas Sewell. I think so I pronounce his name. Again, uh, let me know if I'm pronouncing that one wrong. Uh, but basically, he's six foot five. Another one that was suggested loads in the comments um, of the previous video. So we'll take a look at him. He's quite expensive again, 20 million. It's a lot of money, really, to be paying for him. Um, and his salary isn't actually that bad. So salary-wise, I think we should be okay. But it's the amount of money that we're spending, really, the transfer budget that we might have a little bit of an issue with. Uh, so we may be have to look to uh, get rid of someone in order to get him in. Uh, but to be honest, there's not loads of players that we need to get rid of. So we might be in a little bit of a difficult situation here. We might just have to put in a £20 million bid and we'll wait and see what Hoffenheim say to that. Another player suggested loads was Jonathan Tarr, another centre-back. We'll inquire about him because we don't know exactly uh, how much he's going to be worth yet. But again, an exciting prospect. Uh, should be someone that we'll probably look at at some point. We need to also try and get in people that are less than 20 years old, I think. I don't think you're allowed to get in 20-year-olds. So we need to have a look at trying to get in two or three players uh, that are less than 20 years old. So I'll try and find some. It's going to be difficult to find good enough quality ones. And to be honest, I don't think we need loads of youngsters because we have already quite a young team anyway uh, with some good talent coming through. So I might have to look and try and get in uh, a couple of players that maybe I wouldn't. I'm also going to take a look here at Milik. I know obviously he's just recently gone to Napoli. Uh, I'm just kind of seeing exactly what sort of overall he is. We're going to shortlist him for the future. Uh, potentially one that we might sign later on in the career mode. Um, but again, another quite expensive player. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, exactly how much money we can get from players that we sell. Um, but also we'll have to have a look at some of the youngsters as well. Like I said, the less than 20 year old players. Uh, I'll take a look at some of them now. I think what we'll also do it as another way to try and get some young players is actually scout uh, or hire a scout in order to try and find some new fresh talent around the country and around other countries as well. Um, so we, we are going to have to go with the best scout here, but still he's not that great. Only three star, three stars. So we will uh, go ahead and hire him uh, and we'll send him to Germany for now. We'll just have the one scout. We'll just go with a fairly cheap option. Uh, we'll take him out for nine months and we'll try and get him to find just any type of player, I think, to begin with. So because currently I can't find any players that really fit what I'm after that are under 20 years old, we'll just quickly sim a few days ahead and we'll wait and see on the bids that we've already put in. First of all, we've got Leverkusen coming back and saying um, that they have no interest in allowing Tar joining our team. Um, so that's, that's not put us in a great position, really. Uh, we'll put in an initial bid of, let's just go something ridiculous, 8 million. They won't accept it, but I just want to see exactly how much they are after. Even though they're saying they have no interest in allowing him to join us, um, I think we'll just wait and see what they say to that offer. We've now got our first preseason friendly against Sevilla. Um, we've got quite a strong team out for this one. We are just going to sim it through the usual route, and we've got a 3 1 win there. We'll take that happily, obviously. Uh, three points in the bag, and uh, we've got an email back from Cologne, and they are saying because uh, even though they are interested in the play, they want 34.4 million as well. Ah, okay, that's, uh, that's not really achievable, 15 we went with before. Uh, we'll go with 22 million, and that's really our final offer, I think. Okay, so I've just decided I don't think I want Ramos to stay at the club, just because he's 30 years old, he's not that fantastic, really, so I'm going to maybe try and get in Hernandez. Uh, for Dortmund, which will be, I think, a really good signing. He's very fast, really good at finishing. Kind of just fits everything I'm after. Obviously, he'll be uh, second-best striker behind Aubameyang, but still someone that can come off the bench 
and score you loads of goals. So Ramos is worth about 7 million, uh, and I think we'll put in maybe 15 million as well, uh, and see what uh, Bayern Leverkusen say to that. Uh, I think his initial bid is not too bad. Whether they want Ramos, though, obviously remains to be seen. Uh, in terms of a centre mid, I'm, I'm thinking about it, uh, but I'm not too sure whether we really need another centre mid. Sahin is a player that I'm not a huge fan of in-game, uh, because he's a little bit slower than I'd like him to be. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I'll, again, I'll put, probably leave that one up to you in the comments below. So let me know what you think about that, uh, as well as the goalkeeper situation in the comments below. And I will check them before the next episode. Okay, Leverkusen have come back and said they believe the sum is too low for Jonathan Tarr. I think it was an £8 million bid, was it, that we put in before. Um, so they think that's too low. Again, we're going to have to up it. I think he's going to be worth maybe £14 million, probably closer to £20 million, to be honest, uh, given the prices um, that we have been given for players already. Hoffenheim have come back and said it's unacceptable. We want 30 million for Seoul. Um, wow, that's a ridiculous amount, really. 30 million for him. Uh, we're obviously not going to pay that. I think we've been again priced out of that one, sadly. Uh, so he won't be able to go any further. I'm not going to pay silly money, really, for him when I think there's other alternatives. And uh, I thought I'd just quickly check about uh, Oliver Burke. I just thought I'd see whether he was available or not. Obviously, he's recently joined, uh, but it didn't say that when I was scouting before. So. We'll just take a look, a look at him. He's probably going to be for future reference. To be honest, we might bring him in uh, maybe in January or next season. Uh, he'll be quite a good signing, I think, for us. Um, but we'll have to wait and see how that one develops. Uh, in terms of other players that we're going to sign, we're not getting too far at the moment. We've got transfer offers in uh, for some players I want to try and get rid of. And obviously loan out one of the right backs here. It actually looks quite good. But I'm going to send him out on loan for a year. And uh, hopefully he gets up to maybe around 70, 75 overall in that year. Okay, because at the moment we're a little bit slow on the transfer side of things. What I'm going to do is play my first ever game on the FIFA 17 full version. So we're going to go with this team. It's obviously a preseason friendly that we're going to be playing. Um, so it doesn't really mean that much. But I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, so you've got some gameplay for this episode. Berkey will start in goal. We've got Pizczek, Bender, Socrates, Schmelzer, left back. Then we've got Weigel, Castro, Schurl on the right, Goetze. Uh, we've got Royce there on the left as well. Aubameyang up front. That's the bench I've gone with. Just decided to kind of put some players in there um, that I thought would be best suited to come off the bench for us. Um, Marino, is it, or something like that? I've not heard of him, to be honest, before. Spanish centre mid. Looks really good, actually. Very young player as well. So maybe he'll get a bit of a, bit of a go in this match. We'll have to wait and see. Let's find out how he gets on in this preseason friendly. Okay, before we start, a little bit of a disclaimer. This is my first full match on FIFA 17, so don't expect a thrashing here. I'll be still getting used to the gameplay. Um, I'm still hoping for a win, obviously. Um, I've played a little bit of a match already on FIFA 17, but not a full game yet. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how this goes. Graphics-wise, looks really good. I'm just hoping that we can get ourselves the three points and we can play a, de a decent style of football, really. Uh, but mainly going to be based on possession. Uh, but also, we're going to play quite an attacking style as well. Oh, it's one back by Royce. It's a good pass into Goethe. Can he finish it off? Oh, it's over the bar. Maybe the finesse won't work on FIFA 17. Probably should have hit that one without the finesse, to be honest. But a decent win back there from Royce. And just couldn't quite curl it round the keeper and in the back of the net. Still 0-0. Nil Weigel -nil. into a Bamiyang. Now going to turn and shoot with Goetze. And it's 1-0. My first goal on FIFA 17 career mode. Comes through Goetze, who's looked so deadly so far in this match. He opens a scoring and it is 1-0. Fantastic start to this game. We really have dominated defensively. We've not had to do much here. But the link-up play between Goetze and Aubameyang has been incredible. And in the end, the keeper doesn't even move. 1-0. Aubameyang plays it through to Schurler. It's a good run from him. Going to cut it back inside. Maybe get a shot away, but that's surely a foul. It is going to be a penalty. Oh no, the pressure's on. <laughs> I've got to score this penalty, even though it's a new uh, penalty system that I've got in place. I made a video on how to take the penalties. Um, so, yeah, I've got to score this one, really, haven't I? Um, I'm not massively successful with them, because I think the keepers read the penalties much easier on this game um, than they did on FIFA 16. Uh, maybe because the system's a little bit easier to use. I'm not really too sure, but we've got to score this one, nevertheless. It will be Royce to step up and take it. Okay, which way? I'm going to go, I think, with a bit of a run-up here. I'm going to try and just finesse it into the bottom right, I think. We're going to go with that. And he does. Easy peasy. And again, the keeper doesn't move. 2-0. So we're two and up. We're about uh, ten minutes away from half time, and we really are dominating this match. I don't think they've had a single shot on the goal at all, uh, on target or off target. And um, the keepers really not have anything to do so far. If that continues into the like the Bundesliga matches, I'll obviously increase the difficulty if I think I need to, because uh, the last thing I want is really easy matches. Uh, Bamiyang running through here, going to look for the pass, nearly finds Goetze, but those two linking up have been incredible. 
And that is it for the first half. Still winning the game 2-0. Really comfortable win at the moment. We will make loads of changes, I think, now at half-time. Uh, to be honest, we'll probably make all the changes that you can. Okay, so I've made all but one change. Uh, basically, everyone but Road comes on. So I brought on uh, Ginter, I think is how you pronounce his name. Mark Barcher as well. Uh, the Spanish centre that I was on about. Dembele comes on. Kagawa and Ramos as well. So, taking off loads of players. Uh, Road might come on a little bit later on if I think I need to. Or if there's any injury problems or anything like that. Dembele. Looking for Marino. He's going to cut back inside, play it to Ramos. Could this be a nice finish for Ramos? Lovely turn. Oh, 3-0. Fantastic feat from Ramos. Maybe I shouldn't sell him, but that is a fantastic turn. All right, I didn't really mean to do it, but it looks good, okay? Uh, 50 minutes in, and it's 3-0. Just five minutes into the second half now. I uh, don't really know what happened with that turn, to be honest. Um, I was supposed to just finesse, but... It was a nice little turn, alright, I'll take it. Uh, brilliant pass inside here, and just completely loses his men. Look at that, lovely, fantastic finish, 3-0. Final change, we'll take off Weigel and bring on Road. Kigawa gonna shoot. Oh my days, 4-0. Okay, the keeper's not moved yet again. A little bit worrying now, but it's a fantastic strike from Kagawa. What a hit. Right into the bottom right-hand corner. And it's 4-0 into the 90th minute now as well. This is really the only chance that we've had, to be honest, uh, in the last sort of 25, 30 minutes since the sub uh, substitute was made. But we've managed to make it 4-0 anyway. And we really have rounded off quite a nice game for us. Very comfortable. I've still not had a shot yet this team that we're playing against. So maybe we do need to up the difficulty. Uh, but I think we'll be able to tell um, completely when we obviously get into the Bundesliga matches, the more difficult games, uh, rather than these matches in the pre-season tournament. So... Let's get on with the rest of the match. I think we're pretty much, to be honest, at the end of the game. Uh, that might well have been the final attack. And it was the final attack. Yeah, we've won the game 4-0. Really comfortable win. We got the three points there as well. That puts us on six points uh, after the two matches, which is fantastic for us. And a confirmation that they had no shots. Not so good for them. Transfer offer in for Weigl. Um, yeah, go away. Not interested in that whatsoever. We're going to reject all offers for him. He looks really good in game. Very impressed with him. Cologne will come back and said they'll accept 22 million and Weidenfella. Um, we'll go ahead with the, I think the wage we'll go ahead with, but I'm going to leave it down to you guys. Do I spend that much money on him or not? Let me know in the comments below and uh, I will obviously do that. I will either accept it or reject it in the next episode. We'll give him a crucial first team player as well. Not even too sure what overall he is. We might need to check on that. Uh, some more scout reports coming back in for some players I was just interested in uh, around the Bundesliga. This might be one of the players that I look at that's under 20 years old. He looks pretty decent, so maybe he's one that could be um, one that I maybe sign for later on. Uh, another player that I was looking at as well, 19 years old, 66 overall. Doesn't look fantastic, but another one that maybe we have to sign because he's under 20 years old. And again, we've got Leverkusen coming back, and this time saying they are interested in the player, but they want 27 million as well. Again, I don't think we can go ahead with that. The prices on this game are massively um, over what I think they should be, to be honest. Especially the fact that we've got 40 million to spend, and they're wanting 27 um, just for Hernandez. It does seem very steep. Do I go ahead and actually pay those amounts or not? Or do I just say, no, I'm not going to pay it and move on to a different player that's maybe going to be cheaper for us? So let me know think about that in the comments. Do I go ahead and splash the money or do I save it and uh, be a bit of a venger and kind of just make sure the signings are right for the club before we splash loads of money? Uh, let me know you think about that uh, down below and I'll obviously take that into account into the next episode. Leverkusen again coming back. They want 22.5 million for Tar. I think we're going to have to spend big money, to be honest, in order to get in some of these players. Um, that's going to be the only way we're going to be able to sign players in this series. So I think what we'll do is get uh, maybe 18 million is probably what we'll go with, actually. Uh, we'll go with 18 million. Try and meet roughly in the middle uh, in order to come up with some sort of better price for us. And the final three emails to have a look at. Um, Ramos wants to play the next match. And we've got um, Lozano, I think is how you pronounce his name. One of the suggestions that you guys left in the comments below. Uh, he's a left winger, 20 years old. Looks really good. 76 overall. Looks a fantastic player. Uh, we'll actually inquire about him for the next episode. Looks really good. Will we sign him? Again, that's up to you guys in the comments below. Sadly, not under 20 years old, though, because that would be an ideal for us. And we've also scouted one of the Liverpool youngsters. 17 years old, 68 overall. Really looks incredible. Maybe one that we should sign... Is it realistic though? I don't really know. Another thing for you guys to let me know about in the comments below because that is it for this episode. Um, sadly not signed any players yet because they're asking for huge amounts of money really that we don't 
have, to be totally honest. Um, so let me know what you think I should do uh, because of that uh, in the comments below. That is it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. If we could go ahead and hit 50 likes on this video, that would be really appreciated. Also, if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well if you are new on this channel. Uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. We're trying to hit 5,000 subs as soon as possible, and it would be really appreciated if you could help me out on that. So that is everything. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.